Hello. Um, it is November 5th, and I just finished talking to Ryan, and I want to read some more uh, points. So it's story time. Chapter 2, Headlights Look Like Diamonds. I sat by a really weird lady who smelt like a kitty litter box and some strange perfume mixed together. She mainly talked about her 25 grandchildren and how her 7 children never visit her. I felt bad for her, but I mostly just wanted her to stop talking because she smelled bad and her breath was even worse. Imagine mixing garlic, onions, damp clothes, and Tabasco sauce together. Amplify that by about 4 times and you'll be roughly in the ballpark of how bad her breath was. <clears throat> it took almost all the energy out of me not to vomit every single time she opened her mouth to speak. Thankfully, she got off at the next step. Nobody sat next to me until we reached the edge of the state. The barrier between Michigan and Wisconsin was my first stop. We stopped in a town called Muskegon. Excuse me. I arrived at 10.36 p.m., it was dark, it was cold, I was tired. One of the passengers, an African-American guy, walked past me. He looked directly at me and asked, Do you have some place to stay? I do not, I said, but I'm not interested in making it into anything more than just sleeping until I can fashion a new ride. He looked taken aback by my response. I mean it, if I were to spend the night somewhere, I didn't want to end up waking up without any clothes on. Dude, no, you can just come over and chill and then I'll drive you to the port where a boat will take you to the another port in Wisconsin. What do you say? I thought for a moment, looked at his brown eyes, outstretched my arm and said, I accept. My name is Lorraine Jackson. Christoph Clementine. My family was very big on alliteration, he responded, as he shook my hand. I just have an errand to run. I got to drive to a friend's house to pick up a J. Is that okay? Yeah, I don't care. I didn't know what a J was. Do not judge me. Just keep in mind that I grew up in a very sheltered environment. <clears throat> Christoph jumped in a Cadillac that was sitting next to a broken street lamp and opened the passenger door from inside. It's the only way you can open it, because I broke it one night when I tried jumping out the window. I didn't know if he was lying or telling the truth, but it seemed plausible. We sped off down the road, driving 55 down a 25 mile per hour street. Miraculously, we did not get pulled over. So, what's a J? I asked. Christoph laughed and then realized I wasn't kidding. Oh, it's marijuana. I felt my eyes widen suddenly once the words escaped his lips. I see. His smile faded and he looked over at me and asked, Are you okay? Do you have a problem with marijuana? No! No, I don't. I was just surprised is all. The rest of the car ride was quiet up until we reached his friend's house. He got out of the car and sighed, Just keep tight, and if the cops come, don't tell them anything. I nodded. I'm kidding, he laughed. Just sit tight, this shouldn't take more than a few seconds, unless you want to come in and hang out here. I didn't respond, but he laughed, closed his door, walked over to mine, reached his hand inside of the window, and opened my door. Come inside with me, he suggested. You'll have fun. These guys are pretty off the wall. These guys are great. Oh, I skipped <laughs> Sorry. Uh, backtrack. These guys are pretty off the wall. All right. I mean, this is an adventure, right? Across America to see the woman I love. These guys are great. Mandarin is a DJ on the weekends, and Morris is a cage dancer at a gay club downtown. Morris is straight, but he loves it when the gays get excited. And that is the end of chapter two. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, so yeah.